I'm John Scott. I'm here at Polaroid Corporation in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Polaroid has developed a camera system specifically designed to assist law enforcement professionals in crime scene documentation. One of the most critical duties of the first responding officer at a crime scene is to document the evidence. Photographs communicate more about crime scenes and evidence than any type of written description. The most professional and easy to use photographic system available today is the Polaroid Spectra Law Enforcement Kit. The kit includes the Spectra Instant Camera, a close-up lens attachment for photographing evidence as close as 10 inches, and a one-to-one -one copy stand for capturing and making duplicates of driver's licenses, bug shots, fingerprints, and many other subjects. The system uses Polaroid, Spectra, or 990 film. It all comes packaged in its own durable carrying bag. The Polaroid law enforcement kit has replaced the bulky and complex camera systems of the past. Whether an officer is investigating an accident scene, a homicide, or a scene of violent domestic dispute, the Polaroid system can record all the evidence from the wide shot to the extreme close-up. And there's no waiting you'll know instantly what you've recorded on film. There's a good reason why law enforcement professionals around the country are turning to the instant power of Polaroid photography. That's because the Polaroid Spectra Law Enforcement Kit has everything you need to capture all your evidence on film clearly and accurately. And with Polaroid, you'll know immediately if you've got the shot you need. Let me show you. Robin? In a majority of situations, all you have to do is aim the camera, press the button, and wait for the photograph to develop instantly. It's that easy. Before we discuss the field applications, let's examine each element of the kit. The Spectra camera has a sonar rangefinder for automatic focus, a photo cell for the automatic flash, the flash unit itself, and a three-element 125mm lens. The film cartridge enters through the film door here. After the last picture is taken, remove the empty cartridge by pressing the film door release button here. The shutter button is located on top of the body and a hand strap is located on the side. The release latch that opens and closes the camera is located here. At the rear of the camera is the viewfinder and the control panel. A tripod socket is located underneath. Let's take a closer look. The first switch on the control panel is the measurement selector. Slide this switch down and the distance reading in the viewfinder will change from feet to meters. If you're out of film or the camera is too close to a subject to be in focus, you'll hear a warning tone. Throw this switch for silent operation. The third switch is the self timer. When you slide the switch down and push the shutter button, the camera shutter and flash will fire 15 seconds later. You must remember to push this switch back up after taking the photo. Only then will the instant photo eject from the camera. The next switch over is the sonar autofocus override. Slide the switch down and shut the system off whenever you shoot through a window or a car's windshield. Otherwise, the camera will focus on the glass instead of the subject. Next is the flash override switch. It's helpful to shut this off along with the autofocus when shooting through glass. That way you'll lessen the chance for glare to ruin your shot. The sixth switch here is the exposure control. By adjusting it up or down, you can lighten or darken a photo. The rapid charge indicator tells you if the flash is ready to fire. A red light means the flash unit is charging, and the green indicates that it's charged and ready. Furthest right is the picture counter. The number indicated here tells you how many photos remain in the camera. You should experiment with the settings so that you know and understand the camera's capabilities. In the majority of situations, however, you can leave the switches in the upright and automatic position. To open the camera, push down on the release latch located here on the side. You must use this release latch when opening and closing the camera. To load the film, Push the film door release button here, and the film door will open. Hold the film pack by the edges and slide it all the way into the camera. Close the door, and a protective slide ejects. Throw this away. Now you'll see the number 10 in the picture window. 
That means you'll have 10 photos to shoot. It's important to hold the camera in a manner that allows you the best grip. The designers of the Spectra camera have included a hand strap on the side of the body for this purpose. Slide your left hand through the strap and hold the camera as you would a pair of binoculars. To take a vertical photo, hold the camera with the flash side up. As you look through the viewfinder, push the shutter button halfway down and a display will appear. The number indicates the distance in feet or meters from the camera to your subject. The green symbol on the right is the good picture indicator. When this is lit, the conditions are right for taking a photo. The best distance to take photos depends on what you're shooting. Look into the viewfinder and the camera will tell you whether you're too close or too far away. If you see a flashing yellow caution symbol and hear a warning tone, you should correct the problem before taking a picture. In this instance, the number one indicates the subject is one foot from the camera. The camera's focus range is from two feet to infinity, so step back at least another foot to correct the situation. If your subject is 16 feet or more and you see the caution symbol, your subject is beyond the flash range. Simply step closer to within the two foot to 15 foot flash range. If you're within the flash range and you still see a caution symbol, then the flash unit is switched off. Check the control panel and adjust accordingly. The camera features a rapid recharge flash with a recharge time of a few seconds. When you open the camera, the flash automatically charges. But the ready light will only stay on for 20 to 30 seconds. If you want to take a picture after the green light has gone off, lightly press and release the shutter button and the ready light will come back on. Now that you have a basic understanding of how the camera works, let's take this knowledge into the field and learn how to use the attachments. In this reenactment of a drug bust, officers first secure the house and then document the evidence. Before the evidence is moved, instant photographs should be taken of the scene. Here are some helpful rules. First, photograph the scene from a wide angle to show the relationship of the evidence to the crime scene. Secondly, shoot the evidence close up for greater detail. For the best results, attach the close up lens over the front of the camera and extend the measuring cord. When the cord is fully extended from the lens, the camera is the correct distance from the subject. The result is a reproduction of the object at half its actual size. After you photograph the evidence in relation to the scene, you may shoot the same evidence against a contrasting background for greater detail. Include a ruler or some other object to indicate size. You may also make notes on the back of the photo using an indelible marker. These officers are duplicating booking photos to help identify suspects. To photograph an object like this at its actual size, Use the one-to-one -one copy stand. First, insert the camera into the copy stand. Then look through the viewing door and center the subject within the opening in the bottom of the stand. Push the shutter button and you have a perfect duplicate of the original. At an accident, be certain to photograph the scene from a variety of perspectives. If you're shooting through a windshield, try taking a few shots with the camera flash and autofocus turned off. This will prevent glare and provide the correct focus. Remember to shoot the vehicle's point of impact and interior to document the entire accident scene. The law enforcement kit has been acclaimed for its value in documenting evidence of domestic violence. Instant photographs are being used not only to document evidence, but to assist in the prosecution of the suspect even without the victim's consent. Once again, the procedure here is to photograph the entire crime scene from a minimum of three perspectives. First, from a wide angle to show the overall scene. Secondly, from close up to document evidence. And thirdly, one to one. Remarkably, the Spectra camera is also versatile at capturing fingerprints at a crime scene. In this reenactment of a homicide, officers photograph blood-stained fingerprints left in a bathroom. 
Using the one-to-one -one close up stand, prints are photographed and may then be enlarged. It's always been a challenge to duplicate weak fingerprint impressions at a crime scene. Thanks to its versatility, the Polaroid system makes it simple and fast. One of the system's revolutionary applications is the ability to record latent fingerprints with the use of an ultraviolet light source. Once you've treated the print with fluorescing powder, place the ultraviolet light source in the copy stand door. Turn off the flash of the camera, place it in the copy stand, and place the copy stand over the subject. Then activate the automatic timer. The camera will automatically create a timed exposure based upon the amount of ultraviolet light it receives. For best results, lower the surrounding light. For better clarity, you can place a yellow barrier filter between the camera and the copy stand. Here are more examples of photos taken before and after using an ultraviolet light. Fingerprint photos taken with the Spectra one-to-one -one stand with or without ultraviolet light can be enlarged, traced, and reduced for submission to APHIS, the National Automated Fingerprint Identification System. These are just a few of the applications of the Polaroid Spectra Law Enforcement Kit. Many law enforcement personnel have found new and unusual ways to apply the camera kit to their own particular purposes. Some of their ideas include documenting vandalism, reproducing shoe and tire prints, showing photos to a judge to help obtain a search warrant, and documenting graffiti to track local gang activity. You'll likely find your own particular use for the Polaroid system. Take it with you whenever you're on patrol or answering a call. In fact, it should be standard operating procedure where you work to include the Polaroid Spectra Law Enforcement Kit as part of your field equipment. Always take as many photos as you think necessary. You'll never know when you may need extra documentation. You can learn more about the Spectra kit and other Polaroid products in the newsletter Instant Evidence. Each issue presents the latest in the use of instant photography from law enforcement professionals around the country. Perhaps you too would like to submit your ideas and photos to appear in Instant Evidence. To subscribe, call our toll-free number, one 800-225-1618. We'll also be happy to answer any questions you may have about the Polaroid Spectral Law Enforcement Kit or its accessories.